We are continuing in chapter 5 of Shara Betochen from Cheves Lavavis. We are learning the seven ways, seven ways in which the one who has Betochen differs from one who does not have Betochen in regards to his feelings about making a living. Of the seven ways, we have covered how many? Anyone remember? This is, I think tonight is lesson 39. So we've covered two of the ways so far. Yeah? All right. So now we're going to continue with the third of the seven ways. Vihashlishi and the third way in which the one who has bitochen differs from the one who does not have bitochen in terms of making a living, his attitude toward making a living. Vihashlishi ki habaytech belakim veim yisasik besibais la yismaich belibi alayhat. One who trusts in Hashem, although he employs, certainly employs uh, means, meaning natural means to make a livelihood. He doesn't invest his heart in them. He doesn't make his heart rely on them. He's not emotionally attached. And he doesn't have any hope in them not to help him or harm him other than whatever Hashem wants. Ach, but rather, Rather, he employs these natural methods of making a living in order to serve the Creator who commanded us to be involved in the world so as to build it up and adorn it. What he does is the same thing as somebody who doesn't have a Gets up, goes to work, has a job, right? But his feeling about it is totally different. As far as what he does think about it, what he doesn't think about it. Let's talk about what he doesn't think about it. He doesn't think that his kli for parnosa, like we call it, the vessel for making a living, is the source of his parnosa. And, you know, we've, we've, we've used the analogy before about when the um, UPS guy comes and delivers you a present from your mother. So he just dropped it off. He didn't pick it out. He didn't send it to you. He didn't pay for it. <laughs> it's not from him. He's just the delivery system. So two, you go to work and you have a job or investments or a business deal, whatever it is, a natural way of making a living. Um, it's like the UPS guy. It's just a delivery system. So the guy who has been talking, he does the normal things that normal people, well, what's normal? <laughs> So-called normal. Why are we normalizing a lack of betochen? I take that back. Strike it from the record. Anyways, he does the things that people without betochen do, but he feels totally different about it. He doesn't have any emotional attachment to those things as having any bearing or any determining um, factor in whether or not he makes a living from them or he doesn't. It's only up to Hashem. So that's what he doesn't feel. Now, as far as what he does feel, this is very interesting. When he goes to work and he employs natural means toward making a living, what he feels is he's actually serving Hashem by doing this. Now, it's interesting because you think of, well, there's my religious life, and then there's you know the regular mundane, have a job and work, and it's like a necessary evil. What can you do? You got to eat. You know, you're not just a soul; you're a soul in a body. So you have to have a job. You have to make money so you can buy food. Okay, what can you do? But you know, so I have my religious life for my soul. You know, I dive in, I learn theta, and then I have my you know mundane life where I'm just like any other person, and uh, you know, it's just it's unavoidable. No. No, the one with Bitochen doesn't feel that way at all. He feels that he's serving Hashem in his business dealings. And I'm not even talking about 
although obviously we could add this to it, but you know, when you keep halacha, when you keep chesh and mishpat, the area of Shulchan Aruch that deals with business and he has a kosher business and he does business fairly and all of that, then obviously he's do actually doing mitzvahs in business. But I'm saying, even just forget about any of the mitzvahs that you can do in the workplace, just the fact he goes out and he has a job, he's involved in Yishav Ha'olam. He's involved in making this world a settled place. And, and, and that itself is part of his service of Hashem. It's very, uh, it's very Balshemtiv, even though Rabbeinu Bechaya is centuries before the Balshemtiv. But, uh, you know, they, they talk about how the Balshemtiv used to love the simple Jews, the, the simple tailor with each stitch of the, you know, you'd stitch the, the, the fabric and he would say, you know, I do this for the glory of Hashem. I do the stitch for the glory of Hashem, right? Because that's what the tailor was able to do. He was able to stitch. He says, I'm doing it for the glory of Hashem, right? So the one who has betochen, not only he doesn't idolize, and I use that term decidedly, you know, make, a, make an idol out of the means of making a living, but he sees it as an act of worship, an act of connection to Hashem. Furthermore, let's continue. Ve'im pagiehu te'eles o'yidocha bohen hanezek. If these means yield him a profit or help him avoid a loss, so let's say it works out, whatever it is that he tried to do works, he thanks Hashem alone for it. He doesn't become affectionate or, or, or develop a love for the means. It's, again, it's not like, oh, my UPS guy is so loving, he sent me a present on my birthday. No, your mother sent you a present on your birthday. The UPS guy delivered it. And he doesn't make his soul rely upon those things. It's not like he increases his, his feeling of stability based on those things. Those things come and those things go. Those things fluctuate. A way of making a living, it's just whatever works for today. No attachment. Ach yechzak he only strengthens his trust in Hashem, not in the means that he uses to make a living. And he causes his heart to rely on, to trust on, on Hashem alone, not the causes, not the means that he employs. Now, what if the means he employs to make a living don't work out? He knows that when Hashem wants, he'll send him his sustenance through the means that he wants to send it through. And he won't despise these means because of it. And he won't cease to pursue them in the service of the Creator. Very interesting here. Very interesting. The person who idolizes the means of making a living, who thinks that it's actually the way that he's working that determines whether or not he profits or not. When it doesn't work out, it's like he takes it personal. Like he's mad at Wall Street because his investment didn't work out. Or he's mad at the real estate market because, uh, you know, his investment didn't work out. Or he's mad at, uh, I don't know, whatever, the business. He's, he's upset at it. He resents it because it didn't work out. Person who has been talking, he's not taking it personal. Okay? It's like, oh, I don't like my UPS guy. He's not good. He didn't send me a present on my birthday this year. I don't know. Whoever you were expecting to send you a birthday present didn't send it to you. The UPS guy didn't choose that, right? So if Hashem wants to send you your livelihood through this, he'll send it through this. If he wants to send it through that, he'll send it through that. And you don't have to get mad at the thing that didn't work out because, oh, it didn't provide for me. It doesn't provide for you anyways. Even when it works, it's not providing for you. Okay. And as for the one who does not have trust in Hashem, he employs means to a livelihood because he relies on them, on those means, trusting that they will yield him a profit and secure him against loss. The imhein ma'ilay if it works out, yishabach oisan, he praises them. 
And he praises his own diligence in using them. Oh, I'm so smart that I used that way of making a living. That's why it worked. And then he chooses them, meaning he gets attached to them. He says, oh, no, now I can never do anything else. I don't want to move because then maybe my mother won't send me a birthday present anymore because I'll have a different UPS guy. <laughs> right? No, I don't want to use a different Klee for Parnassa because then the Abishta might not be able to send me Parnassa anymore. It wasn't, it was never the Klee for Parnassa. It was the Abishta. Okay? The im enon ma'ilay slay. And what if it doesn't work out? Oh, let's, let's see what he, what, how he reacts when it doesn't work out. He abandons them, condemns them, loses interest in them, gets upset. Like the verse says, Therefore he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his troll. You know what a troll is? It's like when you go fishing. So similar to a net. The truth is, I don't know the difference between a net and a troll. But it's how you catch fish. So what does it mean he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his troll? He goes out fishing and he gets a bunch of fish. And he says, oh, why did I get so many fish today? Because my net is so good. My troll is so good. It's the net. It's the troll. They did it for me. Right? So he turns them into idols. That's why it says he sacrifices to his net. He burns incense to his troll. Like they are the ones who caused him to make a living. No, it's Hashem. Hashem caused him to make a living. The net and the troll, that's just a, a keli. That's just a vessel for Hashem to put the blessings in. All right. So th that's the third difference. Voravi and the fourth difference. One who trusts in Hashem, if he has anything beyond what he needs for his maintenance, spends it on what pleases the Creator with a generous soul and a cheerful heart. Like it says, for all is from you, and from your hand have we given to you. It all comes from Hashem. So when you give to Hashem, you're really just giving Him back His own. What's the point? The point is that it's all Hashem's. It's all His. So He gave it to me. I paid my bills today. I have left over. No problem, I'll give it right back to him. It, was, it wasn't mine. You understand? The one who thinks, I earned it. I earned it. Okay? So even if I pay my bills and I have money left over, but hold on a second, why should I part with it? I earned it. I should give it to, to, to God? Why should I give it to God? Let God earn it. But if, <laughs> it sounds preposterous when you say it, but that's the mentality. But if I say, no, 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 no. Hashem gave this to me. It's not mine. It's Hashem's. And he's letting me use it. He's letting me use, you know, daddy's credit card, basically. And I paid my bills today. Now, if I have money left over, why wouldn't I be comfortable spending it on things for Hashem? Like tzedakah, primarily. Or tuition or doing mitzvahs behidur, but primarily tzedakah. Why not? I should be very comfortable doing that. <speaking in Hebrew> but the one who doesn't trust Hashem, <speaking in Hebrew> the world and all that is in it does not seem sufficient to provide for him and satisfy his needs. So even if he would have everything in the world, he would not have enough. He wouldn't be secure. You know, security is just a matter of, uh, you know, it's a very relative. It's an emotional thing. How much money would you need to feel secure? Well, the Beiteich Bashem says, I don't feel secure because of money in the first place. So how much money do I need to feel secure? <laughs> I'm secure already. Then there's another guy 
who says, well, I need a certain amount to feel secure. And then he has that, but he's still not secure. And all the money in the world won't make him secure. And therefore, he's very stingy. He's very careful in saving his money, much more than in fulfilling his duties to the Creator and to his fellow men. And he actually, he doesn't even realize it. He doesn't, he's not even aware. He loses his money, and he's left without it. Like the wise man, King Shlema said, There's one who gives freely, yet amasses more. Then there's one who withholds charity and suffers loss. So there's one who spends all of his money, Meaning not like on, you know, silly things like candy and uh, toys, but on mitzvahs and on tzedakah. And he always, he has enough. And then there's another who's stingy and he's saving it up and it's all gone. Right? Because in the end of the day, it's not our hashtadlus that determines our parnos. Hashtadlus is just the delivery system through which Hashem gives us the parnos. Hashem is the one who determines. The Hachamishi and the fifth, the fifth out of seven differences between the one who trusts in Hashem and the one who doesn't trust in Hashem when it comes to their feelings about making a living. The one who trusts in Hashem occupies himself with worldly means in order to provide for his latter end, his final destination. What does that mean? The Marpala Nefesh says it means Elam Haba for the spiritual world. It means that even when he has to make a living, he makes sure that what he's doing to make a living is consistent with his morals and his values as a Jew. He says so clearly as we continue. Only when he is sure that a certain occupation is safe for his religious and secular interests will he engage in it. And he will not take up a profession that might in any way damage his religious life or lead to disobedience of the Creator. So as not to bring upon himself sickness instead of health. Remember that letter? I don't remember which lesson it was. One of the early lessons, four or five, maybe six. But uh, back when we were still in the in the Hakdama, when we we're still in the uh, the compiler's preface, Rabino Bahai's preface, we had that letter from Igris, where somebody wrote to the Rebbe and said he had a, a job. It was going to cause him to miss minion. He, had, he needed to say Kaddish. He needed. He wanted to know what to do. Remember, the Rebbe gave him this whole long answer about, you know, really, you know, the different hetatum, the different uh, dispensations for not doing it. And then at the very end, <laughs> you remember, the Rebbe said, "I don't know how you stand regarding betochen, but if you have betochen, by the way, this isn't really a question because for sure you'll be able to find a livelihood that will not present you a challenge." as far as Yiddishkeit, right? So that's what I'm reminded of right here. The person who has bitochen is not going to do anything as a livelihood that would cause him to compromise his values. Just, it's not even a dilemma. How, how would it be possible that Hashem would make me do something immoral in order to to receive the parnasa that he wants to give me. It's like, it's an inherent contradiction. It doesn't even make sense to the one who has trust in Hashem. However, in contrast, let's talk about in contrast, <speaking in Hebrew> but the one who does not trust in Hashem, <speaking in Hebrew> he trusts in the means that he uses to make a living, but <speaking in Hebrew> and his mind is rested upon them, meaning that's where his security comes from. I mean, that's where he feels his security comes from. And he cannot refrain from any of them. And he will do both those that are 
admirable as well as reprehensible. You hear what we're saying? We're not saying a guy who's specifically looking for a sleazy way of making a living and he wants to do reprehensible things. No, no, no. If he can do something that's admirable and upright, of course he would prefer that. But if the only way to make a living, in his eyes, is, is something reprehensible, what can I do? I have no choice. I got to eat. Right? So he does the reprehensible thing. And he's not thinking about the end. He's not thinking about his world to come. Like the wise man, Shlema Melech, said about this, A wise person fears and avoids evil. And the rest of the verse is, But a fool becomes blusterous and overconfident. And this, Rabbeinu Bechaya, is applying to people who rationalize doing something beneath their standards and principles because they think it's the only way to make a living. Fine. So that, that's what we're going to do for tonight. All right? Okay. So we've covered five out of the seven. Amir uh, tomorrow night will continue, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night.